Smashing jack-o'-lanterns, stealing candy. It's okay. Believe it or not, I was just like you when I was a kid, till my dad set me straight. That is, see, my dad taught me tonight is all about respecting the dead, because this is the one night that the dead and all sorts of other things roam free and pay us a visit. Here's a look at the new NECA toys. This is the Trick or Treat Ultimate Sam. The doorbell rings, the cry goes out, trick or treats. But wait, what's actually going on during the ghostly All Hallows Eve? Something eerie and unexpected, something splattered and spooky, something that brings ghouls, vampires, and werewolves in the night. Answer the door, a shocking surprise awaits. Well, we didn't get a chance to review this guy at Oh Hallows Eve, but we certainly will be having a look at him right now. While I measure off to the very top of Ultimate Sam, I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys that were nice enough to send this sample my way. Taking the tape measure to the very top of Sam's head, you're looking at the readout as I'm reading the readout at 4.7 inches in height. Those asking for the measurements in centimeters, more than happy to oblige, looking at Ultimate Sam standing 12.1 inches in height. To offer up some size comparisons, a treat, if you will, from this humbled reviewer. Here he is next to his original Cult Classics release to think how far we've come. Back in the day, Cult Classics released Sam, uh, of course, the NECA Cult Classics Sam, and nobody really had any idea who this character was. Now look at where we stand, an ultimate version of Sam in the middle here. And certainly on the other, on the other end of things, on this side, it seems relatively empty and blank. Well, let's fill that in with the retro cloth release of Sam, one of which we just recently had a look at. Also for some size comparisons, just in case you guys are wondering, here he is next to Ultimate Chucky. Just in case you guys wondered how tall he may have stood with the killer doll, Chucky. And you can see how all the sizes vary from one another. It's really quite drastic even when you look at Ultimate Sam versus what he originally looked like in his cult classic days. While we're also on the topic of treats, NECA Toys certainly have offered up a lot of treats with this ultimate release of Sam. We'll go ahead and have a look at those right now. The only thing that really is omitted from the original Cult Classics version of Sam happens to be this display stand. I hopefully did not shock and surprise any one of you by bringing this out. But yes, this is the display stand that would have come included with the original Cult Classic Sam. Actually, it would have gone this way and his feet would have pegged in place. Don't believe me, you can go ahead and just attach Ultimate Sam, well, the original Cole Classic Sam, to his display stand, and he would have stood like that with, of course, his bag located on the side. I guess you could get, in theory, some mileage out of this, um, while the stand feet, if you look at them, are a little bit bigger than, unfortunately, Sam's newer holes on the undersides of his feet. You can most definitely still put Sam on top of that, which might be an option I could still go with. The pumpkin holes, or I should say these indentations, which I just dropped the display stand. These indentations right here and here still kind of with kind of hold the new pumpkins in a place that you could still display them. There you go. So if you wanted to, and you still happen to have the cult classic stand by all means, make use of it. It's there after all. Or if you feel like you're doing a disservice to the original cult classics release, keep it with that one. Entirely up to you. Let's have a look at some of the other accessories, and we're going to do some comparisons as well. I want to be this as thorough as I possibly can with this particular review so that you guys can see some of the differences, some of the samesies that would have come from one figure line to another figure line. The next thing we'll have a look at is his sack, this little canvas kind of burlap sack that Sam would have been dragging around with him. It's not as bloodied, I'd have to admit, than the original Cult Classics one. Look at the, look how different this is. Entirely posing the question to you guys as to which one you want to display him with. If you most definitely still want to keep the one traditionally, one that was released with the figure, by all means, use this one. 
But if you certainly like the additional slathering of blood, by all means, use the Cult Classics version. Again, you can mix and match these at your heart's content. This one here was more of a denser solid plastic. I can't help but notice like even like the top handle, if you want to consider it the handle of the bag, is a little bit softer of a plastic. Even like the bag itself is a little bit more squishy and softer. Uh, it does have some blood on it, but certainly not to the sheer extent that this one comes included with. I kind of still like that original bag possibly plagued now with the idea of which one I want to be displaying the new Ultimate Sam with, I might find myself maybe going the route of occult classics. Not really sure. But he does certainly come with that as well. Comes with a pumpkin. Comes with two pumpkins, actually. And we'll do some comparisons of that to the original release. This is the new Ultimate Sam pumpkin, one of the two. And this is the original release. I thought they would have been simply carbon copies, but the sizing does tell me that this one seems a little bit smaller than this one right here. It could have simply been the same mold, shrunk down a little bit, because one does seem like it could be a little bit smaller than the other. This one doesn't have any light up options, but certainly is nice. Overall, neat looking pumpkin. I like the designs of these. If you like the more traditional orange pumpkin, as opposed to the more darker, gloomier orange, again, you can use the Cult Classics one if you entirely want. Where the changes do certainly come into play is this particular pumpkin right here. You'll probably notice that with a lot of the adverts, originally advertising the Trick or Treat film, the notable pumpkin with the flame shooting out the top of its head. It literally blew its top. Then you can compare it to the original pumpkin that would have come with the Cult Classics Relation. While the flame is definitely a lot chunkier on this one, the flame looks certainly much more impressive on the newer release. The pumpkins are about the same. This one def definitely does feel like it's a little bit more decayed and rotting versus the more fresh, pristine looking pumpkin that would have come included with the Cult Classics Release. Now where this one certainly comes into play is the fact if you look underneath, that looks like a battery compartment. You're absolutely correct. Just push that down, that lights up and projects a really nice bright white light up the top section of the flame. Adding a little extra, if you ask me, a little bit of extra pizzazz. I did notice though that the pumpkin didn't work initially when I got this out of the packaging. It just involved me unscrewing the bottom plate, just kind of pushing the battery in just a little bit more. And then once that worked, well, once I got that all in place, everything worked perfectly fine. All you have to do is just push the flame down, just like that, turns it on push it down again, turns it off. Avoid, if you can, touching the top section of the flame. I can't help but mention this to you as po possibly a safety issue. If you do put your hand against it, it is awfully prickly. And while it may not draw blood, you may utter the word loudly, ouchie, 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 if that's how you normally react to pain. So yes, it does work. Like I said, just push it on and push it on and off. There you go. So there are the pumpkins that come included with him. We've already had a certainly look at the bag. And let's have a look at some of the other things that he comes included with. Uh, for example, he does also come with his lollipop. Now, the lollipop that would have come with this particular Sam, I'm trying to remember if it actually was, yeah, well, it was actually removable. This was the original Cult Classics release. We don't really need to look at too much of Sam. We'll probably go back to him in a second. But this is the original lollipop that would have come included with the Cult Classics release. It's a little darker, certainly. The stem is also a lot darker as well. I prefer, obviously, this one right here. Now, if you can compare that to the retro cloth release, there's the retro cloth version right there. It's a lot bigger, as it, sh as it really should be, because the retro cloth version of Sam is a lot bigger also as well. So, obviously, things like the lollipop have to be a lot larger. This would have been when Sam bit down on his lollipop <laughs> right across the neck. Not to his neck, the ne neck to the girlfriend. Uh, so he comes with that. Then he comes with a, a lot of cool looking interchangeable heads. We'll of course have a look at those as well. He comes also, let's look at this. He comes with his bladed, always kind of looked like a Snickers bar to me, drawing a blank as to the actual name of the candy bar in the movie, but it definitely is not just nougat and peanuts. It's definitely a lot going on inside the candy bar as well. And the cult classics release, Definitely actually does a little bit of a better job of putting at least a makeshift label on there. And while you, it's impossible to really kind of make out what the name of the candy bar is, at the very least, the original Cult Classics does have, I think, a better job of conveying that it could be a brand candy bar, whereas the Ultimate Release has left it completely blank. The peeled down paper is roughly about the same. The blade is a little bit longer on the Ultimate Release versus the Cult Classics. 
So again, entirely up to you as to which one you want to go with. Uh, this particular Sam does have a couple of other offerings not found anywhere else. That sounds like an infomercial. He does have the blown off hand, which eventually finds its way back to the socket of the forearm. And while this isn't something that you can attach to the figure itself, I guess you could, in theory, pop the hand off the socket and try your best just to kind of finagle that inside the socket of the hand. In fact, we'll actually try that right now. I haven't tried this myself. I know there's going to be a socket, there's going to be a bowl joint right there, so we're going to pop that off. I guess in theory you could wiggle some of those tendons back into the arm socket, and you could almost do a makeshift job of making it look as if the hand is crawling its way back into the forearm. It's entirely, Or you could just kind of leave it off and just kind of have his hand, you know, handless, his arm handless. Uh, Sam also comes with this hand right here, suited for holding the bag. Or his, of course, his candy bar. You can just plug, plug that in place just like that. There we go. And then you can take his candy bar and put that in his hand. Entirely up to you which one you want to go with. It's to note, though, that all the interchangeable hand options that they give you for Sam happen to all be on this side of his arm, not this side. This side is always going to be permanently relaxed. So if that's one little unfortunate that comes included with this particular figure is that he doesn't come with alternate hands for this side of his body only on this side. Go ahead and take the candy bar off. And that's pretty much all his accessories, minus, of course, his interchangeable heads. So we're just going to move these all out of the way. Don't want to be taking up a whole lot of real estate space, because we'll certainly have a look at the figure. And like I said, we're going to have some fun and just uh, do a couple more comparisons in a second. For the figure itself, for ultimate version of Sam. He definitely is ultimate in the sense that he does have much more posability. And I think proportionately, he looks a lot better to the film version of Sam than perhaps, say, the cult classics. I was very adamant the fact that I felt the proportions seemed off on the cult classics version of Sam. And I don't just simply mean for the fact that he's a lot bigger, but I just felt like he looked less like a toddler. He seemed more like a grown-up, kind of a smaller scale grown-up, yes, but he definitely doesn't seem like he has as much the proportions as the new version of Sam, which I think proportionally just kind of fits better. Uh, the torso, I don't know what it was about this particular one, but it seemed like the arms and the legs didn't quite fit the proportions of his torso, which I feel like the Ultimate version does do a better job. The color scheme is definitely a lot different. You'll notice really a lot more now that you have the figures side by side looking next to one another. This definitely has the more orange traditional color scheme that he has in the film. Well, this one definitely does have more of a rustic color, kind of more favoring a very kind of washed out darker orange reds versus more just the straight out orange that this, that this particular Sam has. I think the only thing I would have done a little bit differently to this particular release is I definitely would have wanted to add or a little or see a little bit more texturing, I think applied to the actual uh, the actual pajamas, the footed pajamas that this Sam has. The head sculpt, though, is quite good. I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. And I certainly can't omit completely the retro cloth release of him, so you guys can see side by side what the two of them look like. Don't worry, I'll be unmasking this guy as well, even though you already know what he looks like. Uh, the costumes are about the same, keeping in mind that this one does use fabric, this one does use the plastic. But again, like the figures themselves, depending on your pleasure, if you like more so the use of real fabric, because I'm really digging the fabric look of this guy, uh, go this route. If you like plastic, though, and superposability, you can definitely go with the ultimate release. Uh, like I said, though, the head sculpt is really quite good. He's got a little bit of blood there at the bottom. He's got the stitched in mouth, which is really one of my favorite aspects of Sam and the button eyes. The head itself definitely looks like it's made of burlap, but plastic sculpted burlap, of course. And he's got all the little noted traits like the trap door. I don't know what you would actually call the back of a full bodied pajama. The little button opening where, of course, the kid would be able to go and use the washroom. He's got some stitches and patches sewn on the front here. And, of course, he also has his fingerless gloves. Everybody was wearing fingerless gloves. It's a Lonely Island song. Uh, down below, of course, he does have his footed pajamas, peg holes in the undersides of his feet. So if you want to make use of a display stand, by all means, make use of a display stand or travel back in time. And if you get, did get the chance to get the Cole Classics version, why not? Use that. I think that just kind of adds and finishes off everything rather nicely. 
Sam has a couple of different looks that you can go with for his alternate head sculpt. We'll kind of look at those right now. This is the completely unmasked Sam exposing the more pumpkin familiar face for what his actual face does look like. What a fun looking design this particular figure was. Part ghoul, part skeleton, and all jack-o'-lantern. He really is the mix of all the best things all mixed together. The mouth doesn't open and close. It's completely in a permanent, somewhat opened mouth. You can still see his teeth, and if you look real closely, yes, Virginia, there is a tongue. A tongue is inside the mouth. Really nice, the fact that they were able to do that. Uh, the other head portrait he goes with as well is he comes with the damaged head sculpt to go well with the damaged hand. So if you want to take the head off, you can most definitely do that. Replace it with this particular head, which has a bit of the pumpkin guts. And if you look really closely, there's a pumpkin seed all hanging out from the side of Sam's face. The faces are what looks to be almost identical. It doesn't look like there's any difference between them other than, yes, the big notable slimy trail of end trails coming out from the top of his head. Really, really like the design of that. If you prefer, then again, Sam to do something a little bit different, he does also come with this head portrait, which is Sam once he's put the mask back on. You can still somewhat see that there's a face inside, and while the face isn't removable, it definitely looks like it could in theory, though I know probably up at the top there, there's not a whole lot going on. Again, a couple of different desired looks if you would definitely want to go that route. Um, the Sam, just in case you were wondering, I'm just going to do a couple of comparisons right now for you guys. Uh, the original Sam, well, here is the ultimate version of Sam once again. And here is what the cult classics Sam would look like. What a big drastic change, not only in color, but sculpt. This one looks a little bit more alien. I think he's got a much more profound head sculpt. And it really doesn't fit the sculpt that he has in the film as well as this one right here. But it's definitely the pop of color that is the vast difference between this one and this one right here. Uh, while well, we're also looking at alternate head portraits, we'll go ahead and unmask Retro Cloth Sam. The only downside to unmasking this guy is getting it just lined up again. I took, of course, the roping off and then had to do everything all over again, which resulted in me trying to line up the eyes and get everything kind of all perfect and fancy. But I do want to take it off so I can show you guys exactly what the difference are side by side. This is, again, the Ultimate version. This is the Retro Cloth version release, which did have a bit of mouth posability, which you can open and close. And see if I can actually finagle all three. That's the difference between all three figures. The Ultimate on the far left, the Retro Cloth in the middle, and the Cult Classics on the far right. So you guys can see the difference between the two. I guess in theory you could use the same head sculpts, uh, pop one off and replace it with this one right here, but then you have an oversized head. That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We'll move that figure out of the way because, again, all of that we've had a look at in previous reviews. If you want to change off any of the heads, by the way, you simply just wiggle the head off. A rather simple, I noticed, to pull off the head and just replace it with any one that you want to go with. Again, if you want to replace it with the battle damaged head, just wiggle that back onto the ball joint and you've got yourself the battle damaged head or one better, you can wiggle that off and replace it with the recovered mask, giving you the slightly deformed portrait that he has uh, You know, once he puts the mask back on. And a couple of different options that you can go with. The hardest part with a lot of these ultimate figures, no fault to NECA toys, but I guess in a positive praise, is the fact that when they give you so many options like this, when you look at all of the head sculpts being so unique to one another, like snowflakes, it does beg the question, why wouldn't you want to get more than one of these? And that's certainly the problem I'm plagued with right now, looking at all of these and how good each of the head sculpts turned out to be. I'd be so inclined to want to buy more than one of these, pick up a couple of these so I can get Sam in his various different looks. They are all unique to one another, starting, of course, with the, well, the masked head sculpt, then having the unmasked head sculpt, then having the battle damaged head sculpt until finally going back to the mask putting repositioned over top of his head. There's a lot of different options to go with. We'll go ahead and pop that off once again and we'll just replace it back with the original head portrait because it seems to fit the best. Certainly if you're going to be having a look, this is what this reviewer is thinking to himself, if we're going to be having a look at Ultimate Sam, it would make the best sense to just go back to the basics and go back to the way he originally does look. 
For this guy's articulation, his head does have a full ball joint, depending on whatever head sculpt you decide to go with. It moves up, it moves down, it moves right, it moves left, and it can rotate in theory all the way around. Luckily, the bottom of the mask is a softer plastic, so it does give you a little bit of extra allowance if you want to move it up and down. And like I said, there's not really anything that's restricting the figure from moving with its posability. The arms hinge outward and roughly at about a 90 degree angle. You can move the arm forward, you can move the arm back. He has not only a single hinge, but he also has a double hinge on the elbow. And whatever hand you decide to go with has a swivel back and forth, and it also does angle back and forth like that. Noted also to mention, and you can mark that down in your notebook if you'd like, this section of his bodysuit feels like it's a rubber overlay, a softer plastic overlay, perhaps over top of a body mold underneath. The legs split out, and uh, you can move them forward, you can move them back. He has a slight swivel and the top cut of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee, or a single hinge, I should say, on the knee, but it's concealed. And really clever the way that they've done it. Not only with the way that they've sculpted the knee section right here, but the way that they've also painted it does a great job of concealing a potential knee joint, which you and I know is actually in there. Feet hinge back and forth, and you can also rock them back and forth that way as a good strong ankle pivot. Yes, Ultimate Sam definitely has everything that you would want. Again, the argument certainly can be made for picking up multiples of these that you can get Sam in his various different looks. And certainly while you're at it, if you wanted to go back to his original accessories and include some of those for the way that you want to display the figure, by all means, it's just, again, a big noted jump for what we originally got with the cult classics. At the time, many of us looked at this figure and thought, who is Trick or Treat Sam? Sam now is becoming like an icon for Halloween. He's right up there with Michael Myers. And really, actually, that's quite the feat, considering there's only really been one trick-or-treat film. The fact that he's become such a benchmark character icon for that holiday season is really, really impressive. And to think that NECA Toys supported that all the way back in the day of the cult classics, look how far we've actually come. <gasps> Blasphemy yells members of the mob. Did you pillage and use accessories from the previously looked at Sam's? I may have. I didn't actually use any of the accessories from the new recently looked at retro cloth Sam, but most definitely I went back and pillaged some of the cool accessories from the original cult classics release. More importantly, the uh, autumn leaf fallen display stand. I couldn't pass the chance of using that. And I used the bloodied bag. The bag that comes included with the Ultimate Sam is cool enough, but I couldn't pass the chance of using the one that's blood-soaked from the original Cult Classics. It just goes to show that you could make use of a lot of the accessories that come with previously looked at figures. I obviously couldn't pass the chance of making use of the LED, the light-up uh, jack-o'-lantern pumpkin that comes included with this new release, because that is pretty cool. And I like the fact that it does have a switch that you can turn on and off by pushing down on the very spiky flamed fire. It just goes to show again that you could make use of the display stand option that was available with the Cult Classics release. I kind of wish in some ways that the Ultimate version of Sam could have made use of a re-release or updated version of that same display stand. It really does a good job of finishing off everything rather nicely. This may find its way to be the definitive look for how I'm going to display this Sam every single year around the time of Oh Hallow's Eve. Unfortunately, I did miss the chance of reviewing this guy around Halloween, but most definitely know that if I don't get a chance to review something right away, the fact that these figures are out on the market and they are as cool as you know what, I couldn't pass on the chance of reviewing this guy. A little bit late, yes, but hopefully it was well worth it for hopefully what I believe to be a pretty in-depth review of the ultimate version of Trick or Treat Sam. If you managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the figure. And do you think it's blasphemy to be making use of accessories from a previously looked at uh, cult classics version of Sam? I mean, after all, it does come both from NECA toys. So I don't really think I'm cheating. I'm just enhancing. And I think the figure itself, as cool as it could be, really does, I think, could have been benefited from using that display stand. Why they left it off completely from this release when they already had the mold in their catalog, I really don't know. But I'm glad I still have the Cult Classics version that I can most definitely use the display stand for displaying this new super cool looking figure.
Again, if you guys manage to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Ultimate Trick or Treat Sam, or based on this review and this review alone, let me know what you guys think. Uh, make sure as well, also, if you are new to this channel, or let's just say a long time viewer never got around to it, hit that subscribe button right now so that you're not going to miss your chance to see any new videos coming onto this channel. And periodically, why not head on over to the homepage and see if there's any videos that you may have missed. We're going to have a bunch of cool new uh, NECA reviews lined up onto this channel. I'm already looking at my itinerary and there's a whole lot of stuff I'm still going to be reviewing. So keep your peepers peeled and stay tuned to this channel on a regular basis because there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.